Hello, you're watching James. My name's James. You're watching me, and I'm talking about watches. Today, I'm going to be doing the full review of the Seiko SPB101J, that being the Seiko Sumo. And I'm going to say something that I've never said about a Seiko before. I think this particular model of Seiko is actually worth more than the money that they are asking for. Overall, with Seikos, I think they are okay priced. I'm never really going to say to anybody that they are an absolute bargain, but I'm never going to say to anybody that I think they're particularly ripping us off. Especially with the sort of grey market that Seiko has going on, you can get them fairly much considerably less than the recommended retail price. However, this particular Seiko, I think is actually underpriced. Well, perhaps not underpriced, but I think it's worth more than the price that they're asking, even at full recommended retail price. And what is that retail price? Well, on the Seiko website, it's about 1,200 Australian dollars. And as I said, that's actually less than what I think this watch is worth. But we are not even paying 1,200 Australian dollars. We are paying closer to about 700 Australian dollars. And that's just from a very quick Google search, finding some very good reputable grey market dealers within your own country. So is this now my new favourite Seiko? Now that I've said that it is worth more than the money that they are asking, now that I'm saying that I am really, really impressed by this watch, am I going to say it's going to take the title away from my Save the Oceans Edition Samurai watch? Well, I'm not quite sure. I'm not sure if now the Sumo is my favourite watch. I still particularly love that particular Samurai, but I do think it's a better watch than the Samurai. Now guys, if you're watching this and you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd really appreciate it if you click on that subscribe button. It really does motivate me to keep making videos. So now that I've got your expectations of the Sumo up here, let's talk about why I haven't bought it prior to now. Well, the reason is because of the case dimensions. Now, I have a six and three quarter inch wrist. That's about a medium size wrist. It's kind of a good size wrist for my concerns because I can sort of wear quite a few different size watches. Slightly smaller watches, slightly larger watches, and the sort of general medium well-known watches. However, I've always found that watches over a lug to lug of 50 millimeters generally end up being too big for me. And this watch has a larger lug to lug than 50 millimeters. So I always wrote it off. I never really even considered it. Until recently, where a friend of mine, he pointed out saying that it is a really worthwhile watch to try. And when I mentioned the lug to lug size, he said, no, 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 don't worry too much about that. It has one of those Seiko curves on the case and it really does fit well to even smaller wrists. So I did buy the Sumo, obviously I'm doing a review of it today and it does fit my wrist and I'm really impressed by it. But let's jump into the full review now. Let's flip the camera. Let me show you why I like this watch so much and let me show you how it does sit on my medium six and three quarter inch wrist. Let's check it out. So what sort of packaging do we get with the Sumo? Well, we get something that's very similar to my Save the Ocean packaging. It has an outer white box, an inner cardboard box, has a little bit of substance to it, but it's nothing too major. We have a worldwide guaranteed booklet with the card in the back, and we have our instruction manual for the 6R35 movement. And here we have this magnificent watch, this watch that has surprised me. And why did it surprise me? Well, it surprised me because of the dimensions of the watch. As mentioned, I was really concerned about this large lug to lug because it is quite a large lug to lug compared to most of the watches, well, all of my watches in my collection. However, it does fit to my wrist and I'll show you that a little bit later. But what are these huge case dimensions that I have been talking about? Well, at the widest point, the case is 44.8 millimeters, which I actually don't mind too much. I don't mind having a larger case diameter. It's the lug to lug that really concerns me too much. The thickness of it is 12.9 millimeters. And I was a little bit surprised. I expected that actually to be a little bit bigger than that. Even though it is not the slimmest watch on the planet, it certainly does hold that sort of thickness quite well and sits quite nice. Now this lug to lug, as mentioned, is 52.1 millimeters. And that scared the bejesus out of me. For me, 50 was really the maximum that I was comfortable on wrist. We have a lug width of 20 millimeters and with four links removed from this bracelet fitted to my six and three quarter inch wrist is 173 grams. And at that weight, you can really feel that there is some substance to this watch. There is a bit of quality in this one and I don't mind a slightly heavier watch. I actually quite prefer it. It's nice to have that feel of the watch on my wrist. 
So what's the first thing that jumps out to me about this watch? Well, it's the looks. And I think it is a beautiful looking watch. And I think it really balances something quite well. It balances not being too showy, not too blingy or dressy, but it also doesn't look too much like a tool watch either. It sort of balances in between those two, which is quite nice because I don't always want a really showy sort of fancy dressy watch on my wrist, but I also don't want something that's too much of a tool type watch on my wrist. This really does balance those two out quite nicely. So how does it pull that off? Well, it pulls it off by doing everything very well. Firstly, we have that nice sort of Seiko black background. This is very similar to some other Seikos I've seen. Nothing too specific about it that is absolutely amazing. It's just done very well. And then we have a bunch of things printed on in white. Firstly, on that Rehort chapter inside next to the dial, we have a minute track printed all the way around. And at the hour markers, you can see that there's a slightly larger indice there. At the six, the three, the 12, and the nine, there's a slightly larger one again. And at the other two, in between slightly less. So you have these sort of breaking down or slightly reducing sizes depending on which marking it is. We then have Seiko printed on in white. We have the Prospects logo, automatic and divers 200 meters. Obviously being divers mean that this is a proper ISO certified dive watch. We then have some text below saying Japan movement and a little bit of numbers there that are nice and small that you can't really read. You'll see there at the three o'clock there is the date window. It is surrounded by a nice little white box and it looks very neat and tidy. I like when these sort of prospect watches just have the date. I think it looks very neat and tidy with them as well. Applied on here with applied indices are at the hour markers. At the 12 we have this interesting sort of inverted cut off triangle with a little bit of a curved top with this little slim piece of metal up into the middle of it. I quite like that. It is polished steel with loom in the middle, but I like how it's had that little added feature. And I like that how that is then tied into the hour hand as well, which I'll show you in a minute. At the nine o'clock and at the six o'clock, we have a smaller version of that sort of truncated triangle, and we have circles at the other hour markers. They're obviously all loom filled. Now let's talk about these hands because they're also polished stainless steel and let's start with the hour hand. You'll see in the middle there is that little piece of steel that to me matches in very well with that 12 o'clock marker. It is nice to have that coming out into that loom as well. So when we do show the loom shot off, you'll see that little detail, which is actually quite a nice feature. I think it's a nice size as well, very legible. We have a nice long sort of sword shaped minute hand, lots of loom in there as well. And then we have this sort of well-known sort of second hand with this divided off little section at the end to give you a little loom at the end, but it's divided into two sections with a syringe tip on it as well. And speaking of loom, let's throw in the loom video now because it is nice, strong loom. It starts off with a nice big burst of loom and it continues on and on and on. Just what we expect from Seiko loom. No particularly surprises here, but it's just done very, very well. And what do we have covering that? Well, we have some sapphire crystal. It is a piece of flat sapphire crystal. And I think there is some AR coating as well because when we put this into the lighting, it is absolutely easy to see. It doesn't get in the way. You can look straight through and you can know exactly what the time is because it's a nice, easy, legible dial to read. And it is nice to have that sapphire crystal on this watch. And it is surrounded by one of my favorite parts of this watch, which is obviously the bezel. It is an aluminium insert. It is black. It has that nice sort of satin finish to it. I do particularly like aluminium inserts on bezels. I know it doesn't last quite as well as ceramic. It can scratch a lot easier, but I like the finish of it better. It has that nice sort of satin sort of matte look to it. And I like that better than the shiny ceramic that you can get from the ceramic inserts. We have a minute track. On the inside of it, you'll see it actually angles down a little bit, and that minute track is inside there, which is very nice. It's just a little bit of an added feature to it. Obviously, the 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50, and some other markings around it as well. And that is surrounded by the actual bezel itself, which is also particularly nice. Firstly, you'll see that it has a nice coin edge bezel, which is very easy to grab hold of. And then if we look, you'll see that it is actually pointing outward. It's leaning away from the watch a little bit. It's not straight up and down. It's not leaning in. It is actually leaning out. I don't think I've seen that on any other of the watches that I own. So that's kind of a nice feature. And you'll see that it is semi-shrouded by the case here. 
And what is the action of this bezel like? Well, it's exactly what I expect from it. It has a very nice muted yet crisp Seiko bezel action. It's 120 click unidirectional. I particularly do like Seiko bezel actions. It has that sort of oh, soft muted feel. I really enjoy it. Obviously no back play whatsoever, no movement. However, being a typical Seiko, we're not lining up exactly. It is very close, but it doesn't fit exactly. So yeah, I kind of expect it, even on one of the slightly more expensive Seikos. But let's talk about the showpiece of this watch. Let's talk about why I think this watch is actually so amazing, and it's the case. I love the case of this watch. It is absolutely stunning. It has eight particular angles, and that is eight so many good angles. Firstly, and let's see, let's look at it from this direction. It's probably the easiest way to see. The first angle is polished, and it is cutting in towards the bezel there. You'll see there's actually its own little angle. The second one is the top of what I would call the top of the case, and that is a nice vertical brushing, very neat and tidy. We then have another angle which goes down onto this fully polished case side, and that forms that sort of shroud on the bezel, which is very nice. The next one is along the edge there. We have a slightly brushed uh, beveled edge that runs all the way along. We then then cut into an undercut of polished steel there. And as you can see, it really squishes in very nicely. But yet there is two more angles and it is on the end of the lugs here. One angle cuts down that way and one angle cuts up into that way. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now I said eight, didn't I? Well, underneath the watch, the back of this case here, that is another angle. It's not flat. It actually cuts up in towards those lugs as well. So I think that feels like a nice angle to it as well. So there's eight angles to this case shape and they all curve around towards the end of those lugs. They all curve down towards the wrist as well and down towards that bracelet. It is amazing. I absolutely love it. I can't say enough about these different angles and the look of it. And I think this is one of the reasons why also it fits so well to my wrist, even though it's such a long lug to lug, because all these angles are coming towards, down, and down. It's brilliant. One slight negative to it, and it's quite disappointing, because my favorite viewing angle of this watch is just here looking at all these angles coming together, looking at the shrouded bezel, looking at the bezel, and then they've stuck a big hole in there. I know that drilled end lugs are very convenient, are very good to use, very practical. However, I think in this case, it has spoiled the best view of the watch. It's not terrible, but I would have loved to have seen them not do that because it, I just love that view of the watch. Fair enough, however, in reality, I'm looking down at the watch like this, so it doesn't really upset that too much. And on the back of the case, we have a screw down case back with that sort of high polished medallion in the center, which obviously has the Seiko wave. Surrounding that is a brushed section, which has all the details of the watch, telling you that it's a Seiko, that it has 200 meters of water resistance, stainless steel, made in Japan, Prospects logo, etc., etc. Now inside here, we have the 6R35 movement. This is an upgrade from the 4R35 movement. It is a particularly nice movement. This one here, it runs at 21,600 vibrations per hour. It has a 70 hour power reserve, which is absolutely wonderful. It also obviously has a screw down crown and hand winding and hacking. But let's check out this 6R35 movement on the time grapher. So the 6R35 movement was introduced in 2019 or thereabouts. It's one of their slightly newer movements put into some of their slightly nicer watches. It has 24 joules, it has a 70 hour power reserve, and it has a stated accuracy of plus 25 seconds to minus 15. As you can see, we are running at 21,600 vibrations per hour. We have a zero beat error, which is lovely to see. 223 degrees of amplitude, which is perfectly fine. Probably slightly lower than I would like, but not a bad figure. And it's running just a little bit slow, certainly within those stated accuracy figures for this movement. So let's talk bracelets. 
Well, what are we going to get from a prospects range Seiko? We're going to get exactly what we expect from a prospects range Seiko in regards to bracelet. It's not too bad. It's relatively good. It has solid end links, which are very nicely fitted into the case. They don't transition particularly well. You'll see there's a bit of a step down there. It doesn't look too bad because, because of that step down leads into another step up. I think it actually doesn't look horrendous, but it doesn't fit perfectly into it. It is mostly satin brushed or brushed down, except for we have these two high polish streaks down the center, which I think actually works quite well on this one. It just lifts it just a little bit. There's a little bit of shimmer to it without too much. On the sides here, it is high polished. They are solid links. They do have a pin and collar style pin in there holding it together. As mentioned, we have solid end links. And from a class perspective, well, what are we going to get? We know exactly what we're going to get, don't we? The positive of it, we have four micro adjusts. So you're going to get a good size of this one. It has the safety latch. And of course, we have a pressed steel innards, which is a little bit disappointing. It's perfectly fine. It's actually very, very comfortable on wrist. But I guess nowadays, I just come to like and expect sort of milled clasps. Um, it does have a diver's extension here, which works very well. Um, it is still pressed as well. And drum roll. How does it fit on my wrist? Well, it fits really well. It's amazing at such a size that it does fit to my six and three quarter inch wrist. And I know it sits to my six and three quarter inch wrist for two reasons. Firstly, I can still see my wrist on either side of it when we're looking straight down. Oh, fair enough, not a lot, but you can certainly see it. You can also see the bracelet moving away and around my wrist. And as you look down on it, you can see it curves down and the bracelet curves away. I know when a watch is too big for me when it looks like that. And it certainly does not look like that at all. I don't want to see that bracelet hanging away from my wrist like that. I want it sitting down and onto my wrist with the bracelet actually being able to be seen on either side of it. It is a relatively big watch. I'm not going to say it is a tiny watch. I'm not going to say it's going to disappear on a wrist. It is a little bit substantial and it has some nice weight to it, but it does feel good and I'm really impressed with how it fits. And it does have a lot to do with that K shape, the way it wraps around. Obviously then having female end links as well certainly helps. If this had male end links, Possibly I would struggle a little bit with this, this one. But wow, that looks good on wrist. I really, really do like it. So what do I like? What don't I like? And what would I change? Well, I think I've come across this again. It's a watch that I don't have too many negative things to say about it. But what are the things that I like most about it? Well, I absolutely adore that K shape. Not just because of how it fits to my wrist, but all those different angles. It is beautiful. It's just lovely to look at lovely to touch you know so seiko is so good at this sort of tactile feel to watches just makes you want to feel them and feel the different angles it's so soft really really nice brilliant i really like it love the look at those sort of the hour hand and that 12 o'clock indice as well how they put the little bit of a touch in there just gives you something a little bit special it's absolutely great to have the 6R35 movement in there too. Just a little bit special, a little bit better than some of the other Prospects range movements. And that bezel, look at that. It's gorgeous. And the action as well, as expected from these watches from Seiko, very, very good. What don't I like about it? Well, I, I, I don't know. Obviously, this is the sort of known Seiko Prospects range bracelet. They're not absolutely amazing. I'm not going to say it's bad, but it does have that pressed steel clasp, which is never going to be my favorite, but it is what we expect from these watches. So it's not a bad thing. It's just something that we're aware of. But what would I change? Well, the two things I would change, I personally wouldn't have the drilled end lugs. I think it would be crisper, cleaner, nicer not to have them. And if I end up keeping this watch, which is a good chance that I am, I may well swap this out to a nice strap code bracelet or something that is made specifically for the watch, but that might lift this watch a little bit higher than it is. One last thing, yes, it would be nice to have that color match that date wheel. If that was black with white writing, it'd just be a little bit nicer. I don't think it's a bad thing. I think they've done it quite well and it does sort of match in with those applied indices. However, it is always nice to have a color match date wheel. And I do have to say, as I've mentioned, I think this watch is worth more than the money that is asking. And if you gave me this watch on perhaps a better bracelet, maybe something that's made very well, and you ask me how much this watch is worth, 
I would have guessed much more than the recommended retail price. But let me talk a little bit more about my final thoughts about this watch by turning the camera back around and getting back to me for my... So I've owned lots of Seikos. I've owned more Seikos than any other brand of watch. And I still have more Seikos in my collection now than any other brand of watch. So I'm not gonna say that I'm an expert in Seikos by any means. There are lots and lots of Seikos out there and I've only had a small handful of them compared to the amount that are out there. But what I am gonna say is that this is the best Seiko that I have owned. And it's funny because I bought this not thinking that I was gonna keep it long term. I thought, I think this is gonna be quite an interesting watch. It may or may not fit me. I want to own it, I want to experience it, but I'll probably end up flipping it in three months, six months, maybe a little bit longer than that. However, now that I've had it a couple of months, I'm really struggling to wear any other watch. I go for this Sumo almost every single day. I really enjoy wearing it, and I really do believe it is worth more than the asking price. And I think that's why they're also maintaining fairly good value on the second-hand market. It's because people know that this watch is actually a really good value watch. And there is also a following to these watches. People love the Sumo. And I didn't quite realize how much people loved the Sumo because I see out there on the videos on YouTube talking a lot about the Turtle, talking a lot about the Samurai, talking about other Seiko models, but I don't see a huge amount of love for the Sumo. And I think people do get a little bit scared off by the size of it. But now that I've had lots of hands-on experience with it, I can wholeheartedly say it is an amazing watch. And one of the best things about Seiko is that they're readily available at jewelers, at ADs. They're available wherever you happen to be living, or well, most of the places that most people live. So if you want to try one on before you buy, you can actually go out there, put it on risk, and actually feel what it's like for yourself. Obviously, generally don't buy from those ADs. They tend to ask a little bit more money. Online, you can pick them up a little bit cheaper. But if you're concerned about that large lug to lug, just go try one on and see if it does actually fit your wrist. Now, if you are thinking of buying a Sumo, or if you own a Sumo, I would love to hear your thoughts about it. Please leave me a comment below. I really would like to know what more people out there are thinking about this watch. As always, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I hope to see you in the next one.